There was a time in history where the UK ran out of money. The later part of the 17th century and all through the 18th century saw a surge in counterfeit coins due to the scarcity of small change and the government's reluctance to provide good small coin for the masses. The shortage was fueled by huge economic growth, such as the Industrial Revolution, population growth and high levels of circulating counterfeit coins. The UK's population between the years 1750 and 1800 nearly quadrupled, and the increase in factory work couldn't meet payroll demands to pay staff because of the shortage. But in 1775, it became so much worse, as George III discontinued copper coinage as it simply did not circulate as it was intended. The huge number of counterfeit coins in circulation meant that they would always be spent first, if they could find vendors to accept them, that is. The second reason they did not circulate was the counterfeiter himself, who would gather up the new issues of coins that he could, melt them down and make two or three lightweight coppers out of one good one, thus doubling or tripling his money that only added to the counterfeits in circulation. And thirdly, large cities often had an abundance of coins, whereas the small towns out in the provinces were left without any coin at all. Many had a bad habit of flowing to the major trade centres and never to return. In 1787, the Paris Mining Company who mined copper ore made a decision that was to solve the economic crisis. They had an abundance of copper and access to coining presses. Located in Anglesey, Wales, they were out of the mainstream and little coin of any kind ever found its way there. So in the midst of the crisis, they decided to make their own coins. Beginning production in 1787, they produced the penny and halfpenny tokens of correct weight produced with a nice design and an edge legend that stated where they were payable to transfer into regal funds. They were avidly accepted by workers and loved by the merchants, and the mines themselves were important as there was now a new supply of copper in Britain that had not existed before. And now, planchettes for copper coins could now be made locally at a reasonable cost. Manufacturers and artists climbed on the bandwagon by producing designs that were not possible until improvements in coining manufactures were made so by the Industrial Revolution. There was a huge demand for the correction in the coin's weight, and luckily there were a lot of people willing to try and sort it. The idea of a copper token caught on, and by 1795 thousands of issues of tokens produced could be found. Because of the improvement in the way that tokens could be manufactured, the commercial tokens were not only the correct weight, but could be made with wonderful designs that not only caught on with the buying public and merchants, but also created a groundswell of collectors determined to get one of each. The collecting craze expanded to the point of many issues being made for collectors at a premium cost. It also caused manufacturers to manufacture coin mules that are pieces made by using an obverse of one token and a reverse of another to make additional collectors pieces. These coins were designed to cheat the public and fool collectors, 18th century banter at its finest. As well as legends, the tokens usually came with an engraved edge. On a correct piece, the edge gives information on the issuer and where he could be found to refund the token into regal coin. Varieties would be made using incorrect edge markings, allowing collectors more coins to hunt down and collect and the user having no place to redeem them. The banter continues. Others started to see the advantage of making tokens too, and tokens were produced to advertise, display, political views and social problems throughout the UK, and there were many designs that really pushed the limits of 18th century propaganda. By 1795 the supply of these tokens exceeded demand. The quality had deteriorated to the point where something needed to be done. And finally the government stepped in and called a halt to tokens, issuing a copper two penny and one penny coins in 1797, or as we know them today, the cartwheel coinage that only lasted three years and did not solve the issue. For a ten year period extended from 1787 to 1797, almost all the coins in circulation in Britain were the provincial or quanda tokens, as they were designed and manufactured by the public, and were not limited by any rules or regulations. Through the tokens, we can look in on life in the late 18th century Britain, and we can see how they lived and thought through their commerce, politics, advertising, and even view their architecture. Avidly collected at the time of their issue, many of these tokens survive in wonderful condition, and these pieces of history can be held in our hands. Collectors today find them even more fascinating than they did years ago. The study of these tokens has proven to be quite rewarding to many, and the stories behind the tokens in the era is exciting to discover. There are so many types of tokens to collect, 
and it's such a shame that my journey has just begun and I don't have more in my collection to show you. The two tokens you've seen throughout the video are from my own, and one dates to the Commonwealth period of 1652 and the second coin from the year 1795 and is one of my most recent purchases. This would have been a trade token and would have been used to pay the bearer one half penny, as displayed within the scroll. The reverse displays a figure of justice standing on a pedestal holding her balanced scales. Just like the well-known reference book for hammered coins, the Sphinx book, these tokens also have a well-known reference book of their own, usually referenced as a D&H number. For the most part too, they are relatively inexpensive and can be purchased for between 10 and 40 pounds, with some rare exceptions costing more. So if you're wanting to look at this new exciting time period, Condor tokens are a great path to research into. The mass UK coin shortage also led to a very interesting period of numismatic history too, the need to import foreign coinage to circulate as legal tender. But how do they make this viable on such a vast economic scale? A very famous coin collected today by the 18th century numismatists are coins that are counterstamped. The foreign coins, such as the Spanish eight reals, were imported and counterstamped with a portrait of King George III, marking them as legal tender to circulate at a value that would be the equivalent of that in England. It is within this series of coins that you really start to see how difficult it was to fix the issue they faced, and the great lengths that they went to try and resolve it. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video, covering one of the most loved areas of milled coins that I am starting to get into myself. Be sure to let me know down below the tokens that you have in your collections, and the coin videos you'd like to see me cover in the future. Thank you all for watching, and as always, keep collecting!